be there like, oh. on time. Welcome to our Bible study here at Holy Family Catholic Church. We are now getting ready for the fourth Sunday of Easter already on May the 8th. It's also Mother's Day, so we wish all of our mothers a very happy Mother's Day. All of our biological mothers, those who carried us in their womb and gave birth to us, and also the many mother figures in our lives. We, I'm sure many of us have older sisters, aunts, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, teachers, mentors, all sorts of women who have been mother figures in our lives. So this weekend we thank God in a special way for the many mothers and mother figures in our lives. So I begin with our prayer before reading the word, which is on page 70, page 70 of our resource at home with the word. Page 70, the prayer before reading the word. Together we pray. God of our ancestors, you have raised up Jesus and exalted him at your right hand as leader and savior. Open our minds to understand the scriptures and as with great joy we bless you in your temple. Make us witnesses who can proclaim the repentance and forgiveness you extend to all the nations. In the name of Jesus, the Messiah, our great high priest, who intercedes before you on our behalf, living and reigning with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We suggested that we're getting ready for the fourth Sunday of Easter on Sunday. We love the fourth Sunday of Easter because we know it as Good Shepherd Sunday. So each of the three years of the cycle, on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we have readings, we have scriptures that deal with shepherds and sheep. There are different ways of analyzing the scriptures. One is doing a literary analysis. That means looking at the words. If we were simply to look at the words that are contained in the scriptures this Sunday, we'll see various themes. I've highlighted them, some of them here on the board. The themes of God <coughs> being the shepherd and us being the sheep. We'll also find this interesting uh, image. Not only are we the sheep, but in the second reading on Sunday, we'll see the image of God on the throne and the Lamb being on the throne beside God. Of course, when we refer to the Lamb with capital L, the Lamb of God, who are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus. We're talking about Christ. So John, in the second reading, in the, in the, the book of Revelation, is going to have this vision of God being seated on the throne and the Lamb being on the throne beside him. And we're going to be talking about how it is that the, the Lamb is now the shepherd. Huh. We are the sheep, interestingly, in the responsorial psalm, the Jewish people saw themselves as being the sheep. We are God's people, the sheep, the flock of the Lord. God is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. The Jews saw themselves as the sheep. And as we're going to see in the first reading, Paul and Barnabas were going to suggest, well, you Jews did not do a, do a very good job of listening to the shepherd's voice, and so now we will preach to the other sheep, another flock, those who are Gentiles. We remember that in the Jewish world, they had two categories. You were either a Jew or you were a non-Jew. The word that they used for non-Jews were Gentiles. So which category do you fall into? Are you a Jew or are you a Gentile? If you're a Catholic, I'm guessing that you're not a Jew. Instead, you are a Gentile. Gentile. The Gentiles follow Jesus, right? Or some of them. Some many Jews. Gen many non-Jews follow Jesus. We call them Christians. Right. And that's... <coughs> but there were some Jews that did join in, right, with Jesus or... Well, yes. So the apostles. Yeah. So the apostles were Jews. Jesus was a Jew. So originally we were, we were a religion of Jews, and interestingly, there becomes this blame game in some of the gospels, like in the Gospel of Matthew. Oh, he blames the Jews in a big way for Jesus' death, and how it is that as we were expanding the religion, then we didn't just rely on trying to convert Jews. We also looked for non-Jews. So Paul goes off and preaches to the Gentiles. 
Paul and Barnabas, we'll see in the first reading, are going to be preaching to the Gentiles. Actually, they're going to be talking to the Jews, but saying, hey, you Jews didn't recognize Christ. You killed Jesus, the Messiah. And so we're going to take our message to this other flock of non-Jews, Gentiles. Some other themes that we're going to be seeing then in Sunday's scriptures deal with persecution and distress in contrast to God giving us shelter and protection. We'll see that in the <coughs> response to song. Tears and joy, we'll see those themes in the scriptures. And also death and life. <coughs> life will be a repeated theme. We'll see life in the first reading, in the second reading, in the gospel as well. So the theme of eternal life. We will not die or perish. Instead, we will enjoy eternal life. So far, so good? We always, almost always jump in with the first reading first. This week, let's shake it up a bit. Let's jump in with the responsorial psalm first. Why do we start first with the responsorial psalm? Because we know that during the Easter season, the first reading comes from the New Testament, the Christian scriptures. So the first reading, the second reading, and the gospel all come from the New Testament. The only words that we have from the Old Testament this Sunday is the responsorial psalm. Think about that for a moment. So the oldest writing of all four that we see for Sunday, the oldest of all four of them is going to be the responsorial psalm. So the psalm was written first, which is this beautiful hymn of how it is that we are God's people, the sheep of God's flock, how it is that God is our shepherd. That'll be the, the, the psalm was written first. After that, then, was written the first reading, which is from the Acts of the Apostles. After that, was uh, we have the Gospel of John and the Book of Revelation, which were written roughly the same time period after that. So, if we were looking for a why don't we read the psalm first since that one was written first of all these and then we'll read the first reading and then we'll read the second reading of the gospel. <coughs> who'd like to proclaim the, or who'd like to read through the responsorial psalm for us? We don't usually read through it, but Amanda, go for it. Love that voice. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people. The flock he tends. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. What I love about the word, the very word psalm, comes from a, a, a root which literally means to sing to the harp. So in many churches, you'll never hear them say the responsorial psalm because the responsorial psalms weren't made to be said. Follow me? The responsorial psalms were written to be sung. In fact, to a harp or to a stringed instrument. So imagine that every Sunday when we're proclaiming the responsorial psalm that these were actually written as songs. This song, we translated it a certain way, which is which has very exclusive language. We'll clean it up in time for Sunday. We use a Roman Catholic uh, resource. So the Roman Catholic Church is going to be saying, he and him, he made us, his we are, his people, the, sh the flock, he tends. Who are we referring to? Referring to God, of course. But if we're not using, here we're not using God's pronouns. We know that the Roman Catholic Church often uses, chooses masculine pronouns for God. Here at Holy Family, instead we use God's pronouns. Are we all familiar with the controversy over pronouns these days? People say they're often will introduce themselves with their name and their pronoun, right? I'm Father Jamie, and my pronouns are he, his, he, him, his, or you know, however it is that a person introduces him or himself. What are God's pronouns? They are not he, him, and his. God is as much feminine as God is masculine. Indeed, the argument could be made that God is more feminine than masculine. 
because our God is a creating God. And we think of when we think of who creates and who gives birth to life in this world, is it the men? <coughs> yeah, they have a role, but God was imagined to be female or woman long before God was imagined to be male or masculine. 10,000 years ago, before patriarchy filled our imagination with God as him or his, we imagined God as the feminine divine, as the one who gave birth to everything that exists. So we'll clean up the language in time for Sunday. Instead of saying, for instance, we are his people, we'll use God's pronouns. We are God's people. Instead of saying the sheep of his flock, we'll probably say something to the effect of the flock of the Lord, or the sheep of God's flock. We'll find some way to be able to, to make it inclusive so that all people can see themselves as children of <coughs> this loving God. Do you see some of the themes that we talked about here? We are God's people, the sheep of God's flock. We are the sheep, God is the shepherd. Verse 1, sing joyfully to the Lord, come before God with joyful song. That theme of joy. Questions or comments on the response to psalm, which is the oldest of all of the scriptures this weekend? If not, we'll go on to the Acts of the Apostles. Do you remember that the Acts of the Apostles, who wrote the Acts of the Apostles? Luke did. Luke wrote two books. The first book was the Gospel of Luke. That's part one. And then Luke kept writing. And part two of Luke, written by Luke as well, is the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles talks about everything. After Christ ascended into heaven, what happened after that? That's where the Acts of the Apostles begins. It talks about the early community. We'd like to read the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. I'll read. That voice. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. So we'll just check for understanding. Who are the main characters here? It's... Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas. So Paul and Barnabas are traveling together. They arrive at the city of Antioch. Have you heard of Antioch before? Where is Antioch located in modern day? Turkey. Turkey, good guess. Turkey, modern day Turkey. So Paul's travels are mostly in modern day Turkey or modern day Greece. Antioch is in modern day Turkey. So in Antioch, we remember that the early church grew up around five centers, five patriarchs. For instance, the Patriarch of Jerusalem, the Patriarch of Antioch, the Patriarch of Alexandria, the Patriarch of Constantinople in the East, and the Patriarch of Rome, so that when the church split, it was the Bishop of Rome who became known as the Pope, and they excommunicated one another, so that over here in Antioch, there was a Patriarch, a Pope, if you will, of Antioch as well. It was one of the five ancient centers of the church. Antioch was. So Paul is preaching in Antioch. <coughs> Paul and Barnabas. They're in a synagogue. Who worships at a synagogue? Do Christians or Catholics go to synagogues? No. Who goes to synagogues? Jews. That's where Jews gather. So they had the temple in Jerusalem where they went for various feasts, but on regular weekends, they would just go to the local synagogue where they would hear the word proclaimed, they would hear scriptures proclaimed, and they would hear a, a teaching, a lesson. We might call it a homily or a sermon today. That's where they would go to be inspired with the word of God on weekends, on the Sabbath. What day of the week is the Sabbath? Is that Monday, Tuesday? Saturday. 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 In Spanish, we call it sábado. 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 The Sabbath is Saturday. And what I love about this first paragraph, it's not that we're dwelling on it, is that the Jews urged many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. So here we find uh, these people of two different religions coming together, Jews and now 
Paul and Barnabas preaching this other message, all talking about how God is working in different ways. So Terry Ann, pick it up from there, because tell us, now, now it's going to start to get interesting. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The we'll, Gentiles... We'll pause right there. Thank you, Terry Ann. So, we're following on. On the following Sabbath, then, so Paul and Barnabas get into town. They go to the synagogue one day. They're preaching the word of God. And now so many people are coming to them that the Jews are jealous of them. And so they, like, try to tear them down. It's this human tendency, right? The crab tendency. They say you don't have to put a lid on a bucket of crabs. Why don't you have to put a lid on a bucket of crabs? Because the crabs just claw and bring one another down. What's happening with the Jews and the Gentiles? The Jews are bringing Paul and Barnabas down. And Paul and Barnabas tell them, since you rejected Jesus, they're telling you to the Jews, since you Jews rejected Jesus and condemned yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, again, that theme of life, we now turn to the Gentiles, to the non-Jews. We want to preach to the non-Jews. Because even God said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles. In Latin, the phrase is lumen gentium, a light to the Gentiles. Or we also translate it as a light to the nation. For any of us who are old enough to remember the 1960s, lumen gentium, a light to the Gentiles, a light to the nations, was the, the name of an important document of the Second Vatican Council. I will make you a light to the nations, to the Gentiles. Not just for the Jews, but to all people. Talk about an inclusive God. That's what I love about this. God didn't just come for one people. God isn't just the God of the Jews. God is the God of all people. I'm confused. Because in that, in that first paragraph, it said that many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. So Paul and Barnabas weren't going out and preaching about Jesus? They were preaching Jesus. And but the Jews him. didn't believe in Jesus, so they wanted them to stop about talking about Jesus and just go to God. They didn't realize that God and Jesus were the same at the time? Well, that would have been scandalous. Yeah, think about that for a moment, how scandalous it would have been. I think there's even a note about that uh, in, on page 79. One, two, three, third paragraph of Scripture and Insights. When Jesus says in today's Gospel, the Father and I are one, that would have been scandalous. It was scandalous to think of a human being like us as God. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Jews yeah. always believe that God is God. Mm -hmm. God alone is God. And now suddenly yeah. Paul and Barnabas are preaching something else. They're preaching that this guy, Jesus, who is as human as Joe is, see how human Joe is? Flesh and blood? That's how Jesus was. And you're telling me that a person like Joe, even though his name was Jesus, was God? For the Jews, that was crazy. So, so God didn't give up on the Jews because of what they did to his son because they still believe in God. So he thought, he thought, okay, they're, they're worshiping me. Now let me go to these people who don't have anywhere to go. I love that way of looking at it. Okay. There are different it. paths up the mountain, I like to say, right? The Jews have their own spiritual path and their own beliefs, their way of getting, growing closer to God. Christians and others have their path as well, right? They grow closer to God through the person of Jesus. Whether you're Jewish, whether you're Christian, it's all the same mountain. Mm -hmm. We're all trying to get closer to God, <coughs> expressed in different ways. But for the Jews, it was scandalous to think that a human being was God. Hmm. A human being can't be God. Either you're human or you're God. God doesn't become human. Humans don't become God. There's like this 
divide. There's this abyss between two of them where you can't you can't cross that. Uh, think of all the ways that if you were to make a column here, right? We're going to put God in the first column, human beings in the second column, right? God is eternal or immortal. Human beings are mortal, right? So it's how it is that you know God is all powerful. Human beings are weak and limited. Oh, so a human being cannot be eternal, all powerful, all knowing, etc., etc., etc. And God can be limited to a human body. That's how the Jews would see it. Either you're God or you're human. You can't be both. <clears throat> for the for the Christian faith now, Catholics included. To say that Jesus was true God and true human being, what did that mean? That Jesus was 100% God and 100% human. Super for Jews, yeah, for Jews that made no sense. I agree with that. Either you're a cat or you're a dog. You can't be a 100% cat and a 100% dog. Follow me? Either you're a cat or you're a dog. Which is it? Is it a cat or is it a dog? So what are the Jews expecting, you know, because they didn't believe in Jesus, so what are they expecting to get when God comes? Are they expecting this, you know, this, like, I don't know, angel? What are what do they want? What I mean, if they, if they don't believe it, you know, he was a human. I, I don't know. I don't know what they, what form of God they're wanting to wait for. Do you know? What what is it that they're waiting for? Like for yeah. us, we believe that Jesus was a human, and he was, you know, that he already that he right. came already. And so then, once we will be going to his kingdom at the end of time, what do they believe? What are they What are they expecting to? You know, they're still waiting for the Messiah. Well, there you go. Well, what are they? Answer, you just answered your own question. Yeah, because they're but waiting for the Messiah. In the form of what, though, Father? Excellent I'm... question. They can't accept a human being being God. Excellent question. So what I'm hearing really suggest is that, right, there are some who look at, at Jesus and say, Jesus, this human being like us, was the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Jews look at him and say, yeah, he was a pretty good guy. It's a pretty good trick, but, yeah, we're, we're still waiting. Wow. Did the, the uh, after... Jesus was around. <clears throat> did, did those followers still consider themselves Jewish? Many of them did. Okay. They were simply, we like to jokingly call them Jews for Jesus, right? <laughs> they were Jews who believed that the Messiah came and his name was Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. So I, who was a Jew, and now a Jew for Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. But they still followed their own religion. Yeah, the, the initial ones were still Jews. They, they followed the law. They continued to circumcise their male children. They continued to go to the temple. They continued to do all this. There came a point where the Jews said, you know what, you're no longer one of us. Mm. And it was when the Jews said, you're no longer one of us, that was dangerous for us. Because so long as we were Jews, we were protected. The government did not persecute Jews. But as soon as the Jews pushed us out of their synagogues and said, get out of here, we don't want you here. You're causing trouble and you're, you're preaching something that we don't believe. Then suddenly we were subject to persecution. Yeah, we were no longer protected. Do they accept it now? <clears throat> Do Jews accept Jesus? Jesus? Yeah. As being God? No. No, still, still not. False? Yeah. So what, are, what, what would... It would be interesting if you have any <coughs> Jewish friends or family members, ask them, because I have a feeling what, what's, what's happening is it's simply a case that, you know, the, the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures are comprised, the first five books we know of as the law, the Pentateuch or the Torah, the first five books contain the law, after that we have the prophets, and in the book of the prophets it starts talking about the coming of <coughs> the Messiah and the kingdom of God and what that will look like. And so some of us believe that the Messiah came in the form of Jesus. We call ourselves Christians. Others are still dating. But Paul and, Paul and, Bar, and Barsetta, what they did was they gave up on this people. I mean, they just, let's go somewhere else where people really want to. 
at least that's the way that, that Luke painted it, the Acts of the Apostles. Luke painted it as Paul and Barnabas giving up on them and saying, hey, if you're not going to listen to us, that's okay. There are a lot of folks out there. We'll go preach to them. That's one way of telling the story. That's how Luke tells the story. The way the most historians tell the story is, you know what probably happened? You know, you get these people like Paul and Barnabas preaching something, and they were probably, they were pushed out of the synagogues and persecuted and so, you know, all these things that happen, or bad things that happen to these synagogues, you know, <laughs> the people do bad things to their churches, synagogues. Yeah, yeah. Acts of violence you're referring to, like, modern yeah. day acts of violence yeah. in synagogues against Jewish people. Is it because they don't believe in God? Or Because mm, Jews don't believe in God? Yeah, I mean, don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, just, I just wonder why they're always being picked them. on, you know? So since the 1960s, the Roman Catholic Church has tried to pull back on its language. Before the 1960s, it, it blamed the Jews for Jesus' death. Every oh. Good Friday, we blamed the Jews. So for instance, when President Joe Biden launched his presidential campaign, do you remember the video that he showed of white supremacists marching and saying, Jews will not replace us? Do you remember that language? Jews will not replace us? It's hearkening back to sort of like this Nazi call of purity and, and the elimination of six million Jews during World War II. This crazy, we call it anti-Semitism. To be anti-Jewish is to be anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism is something that we're trying to overcome as a church and as, an, as, a, as, a, human, as a human race. <clears throat> to think that in the 1940s, were some of us alive in the 1940s? There were people who mm -hmm. killed other people because they were Jews. To think that within our own lifetimes, within the last five, six years, we had people chanting, Jews will not replace us. That is anti-Semitism at its height. Six million Jews. That's the population of Los Angeles, California. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a statue in Georgetown, in Georgetown, about a man that that uh, he was Jewish, and and the clan, the triple clan, uh, wanted to uh, persecute him, but uh, this lawyer stood up for him, and and it's a statue. It's really nice to to read it. Uh, you know, I was there and I I read about it. It was quite a quite a story over there in Georgetown, Texas. Georgetown, right here. We, I think, sociologists and others would look at this phenomenon as sort of this phenomenon. Human beings, for whatever reason, create this: the in group, those who are part of us, and the out group, those who are part of them. In inclusive Catholicism, we're trying to overcome this. Really, we are. We're trying to see ourselves, all of us, as being part of us. Even our Jewish sisters and brothers, our Muslim sisters and brothers, Hindu, Buddhist, atheist, you name it, non-religious, all of us are sharing this plan. And rather than suggesting that I'm right and you're wrong, creating this in-group and out-group, right? Think Jews will not replace us. Oh, that's a pretty strong statement. Jews, them, they, Jews, will not replace us. And there becomes this villainization. And human beings know that Part of the the, uh, the reptilian brain that we have as human beings is motivated by fear, and so I can motivate a person more by fear, which is why we which is why we instill fear in our children. Think about that for a moment. It's easier to motivate your kids by with a, with a fear of punishment than it is with giving them a treat. If you don't clean your room, I'm going to slap you upside the head. You. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we use fear, and one of the great fears, and we see it in politics too, is this us versus them, right? Create a border wall, right? Where is this coming from? It's creating this fear of us in these United States of America versus them who are coming in caravans to attack us and do whatever, right? I'm trying to think of, we talked about when Joe Biden ran for office, who was his uh, uh, predecessor's name? 
when he ran for office, he like came out with uh, this, you know, this Mexicans are rapists and yeah, whatever right. the narrative he was trying to spin, sort of like this us versus them. Will there ever come a day when we as human beings stop talking like that and just see us all as, to use my image, it's, it's all the same mountain, right? If you're Jewish, you have one path up the mountain, you believe one thing. If you're Catholic or Christian, you have another path up the mountain. They're all paths up the mountain. Why do you see, focus on what we all have in common rather than what makes us different? This us versus them. Who's part of my group? Because think about all the ways we divide people using those categories. By race, we get certain rights and they don't. Men versus women, sex, right? Men can be priests and bishops, women cannot. That just, that, that would blow Jesus' mind. If Jesus could come back today, and see the church that was built in his name that excludes women, he would pull out all of his hair and run screaming away from it. <laughs> Must endure. <laughs> Sobre Inés. So, uh, <clears throat> Sobre Inés, one of the Cruz. Yeah, Inés de la Cruz, which you wrote about uh, hombres necios, <laughs> spoiled <Hombres> brats. <laughs> you call it all <laughs> men spoiled brats. You know? At that time, you know, and she was quite a leader. <laughs> Terry Ann, bring it home for us. So where is this, where is this scripture going? <coughs> the Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence, who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Imagine the good news here that they're receiving. The Gentiles are no longer the outsiders, part of the out group in this us versus them, you're either part of us, you're either a Jew, or you're not, you're part of them, the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles are no longer getting the message that they are on the outside, that they're the outsiders, but now they are part of us, and we are part of them. All of us are coming to believe in Jesus. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and they glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe. The Jews, however, who continued at that time to think of this us versus them. Hey, they're not part of us. They can't be part of our religion. We won't be part of them. This is our synagogue, our territory. You are no longer part of us. Paul, who was a faithful Jew, was raised a good Jew, was now no longer part of us. And so in Sunday's first reading, we have this symbolic expulsion of Paul and Barnabas from the synagogue and from their territory. See that? Expelled them from their territory, right? This is our land. This is our town. You get out. And if only we could say that this only happened 2,000 years ago and today we live together as a human family, that's the dream that Martin Luther King Jr. had. I have a dream that all people will come together and realize that we're all part of the same family one day. And instead, 2,000 years later, we continue this in-group, out-group mentality. They shook the, the, the dust. They shook the dust from their feet in protest against them. In which Iconium, the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. I wasn't there. All I have is Luke's story of it. I've got to imagine they had a few words that were less than joyful. I was going to say, and they just <laughs> they got probably, picked up. They probably muttered a few words under their breath. <laughs> but the story that Luke gives us is that these people they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and so when they left, they're like, "Yeah, it's okay." I love looking at your face. Your face is just registering this, <laughs> this insight. Like, 
That was my only comment. I was like, they just got kicked <coughs> out of the, the town and then they're filled with joy. Yeah, we got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining, at the time, I'm imagining there were other human feelings that were involved. But for Luke, who is writing the story many years later, Luke didn't want to dwell on that. He mm. said, you know, the, the lesson that I want to give the folks who read this is, you know when people persecute you, you know, think of your own family. There's enough family drama in many, so many of our families, right? And so if someone is like mad at you for whatever, you know, you just, I, I love you dearly, but I'm just shaking. I'm not telling the person this, but I'm just going to shake the dust off my feet right now and give that person the space that he or she needs and trust that if, if it is God's will, then maybe one day our paths are going to go. But you know what? I just, human beings are going to be human beings. Yeah. And they're going to do and say nasty things to one another, which is what we see in the first reading. Is it? Go ahead, Mario. I was... I was say, going to say this about, uh, <coughs> you know, when, we drink, when we're drinking coffee, if an Anglo-American walks in, some of my friends say, ahí viene un americano. <laughs> hey, we're all Americans too, you know? And, and I keep telling them, uh, why do you call yourself Mexicano? And you're supposed to be an American. I mean, is in this country, um, an American country, it doesn't mean just one race. It doesn't mean one group. Uh, and being an American is... We're in 2022 and we, we find ways to, to talk about how <laughs> other people are different from us. You know, and that was probably the most polite word that they could find in that situation. Think of the words that we use for people <laughs> that, that really that really frames the outgroup in really negative terms. We're beginning to overcome it. I'd like to believe that we're beginning to overcome it. I remember when I was raised in a very different time and place, there were some pretty pretty bad words for people who are not part of the in group in the place where I was raised. If you were of a different nationality or a different race, or a different sexuality, you name it. There are all sorts of words that we used to label them. But you know, Father, you know, just thinking about that, um, or maybe it's just me. I'm not prejudiced, but I say things that I, I, th I think are, you know, lead people to believe that I am. <laughs> you know, for example, Mexicans. I'm a Mexican. Oh, look at that white boy over there. Oh, look at that black guy over there. You know, but then you see an African American guy and say, "Oh, look at that! You know, wet back over there. Look at that white boy." I mean, every it seems like every ethnicity has a little bit of that in them to label each race. So instead of saying that we're not prejudiced, let's just admit to our biases and our prejudices, biases, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because anytime that we say that white boy, that black girl, they never have. Why do you have to use that word to describe another person? Why is that important? But you're not, you're not, you're not Mexican. Mexicans yeah. are from Mexico. That, that's Mexican. any label that we use. That, like, we're probably right? So any label that we Mexican. use, right? Right? Mexican, Mexican-American, whatever, whatever label we use labels to distinguish people. And it's good and helpful, don't get me wrong, right? When it comes to the time of the census, it's important to know, you know, how many people of different categories are in, you know, in, in a certain place, we, we enumerate this, but just for the practical living with one another, what, how important should these things be, especially if they divide us? But in the Olympics, <coughs> everybody's an American. When, when you win a medal and all that, you're an American, whether you're black, or Hispanic, whatever, Puerto Rican, whatever. And then they come home. That's the thing about you. You go off to military service, and you're all American soldiers, and then the Mexican-American soldiers came home. We could use other words, too, right? But when the Mexican-Americans came home and, and found us, that we are veterans. We serve this nation, and you are telling me that I cannot walk into that restaurant and sit in that restaurant with other people? Yeah. Did I have to be served in the back door? Of course it was awakening for us as a nation after World War II when our veterans came home and were treated the way that they were treated. Rudy? According to this questionnaire I just filled out to get a 
COVID test. I am white mm -hmm. of Hispanic descent. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am not Mexican. You're white boy. <laughs> and, and when I say white, yeah. I scratch my head when, <laughs> when I check that off. I go, well, well, let me go to the next one. Then it says Hispanic. Okay, I'll yeah. go with that. <laughs> it's crazy. I, no. may have, I may have told this story before, but my family were successful farmers in Missouri. About 300 acres, 300, 100, 100. And during World War II, they still could speak German. They spoke German. And so they had criminals working on the highway reporting on them because they were speaking German. <laughs> they were them. During World War II, right? When we were at war with the Japanese and the Germans, etc., right? And there's this human tendency where humans villainize others. We're not like them. Sometimes we even villainize people of our own in-group. <laughs> which is when, when it gets really sad to see the infighting that starts happening in various groups. I've served in Mexican and Mexican-American parishes long enough to know that some of the most biased persons against those who are recently arrived are those whose grandparents and great-grandparents arrived across the board. There's this, this fascinating dynamic of human beings looking to separate people into boxes and to label them as being different from us. Instead of seeing what we have in common. Hey, you just crossed the border, and my great great grandparents crossed the border. We have something in common. No, instead it's like, you, pardon me, <laughs> wet back. Mm -hmm. But there's this human tendency to villainize. To, to, I'm part of the in group, and you're not part of my group, and so I label you. What do you I was talking about uh, the the uh, Germans, when they were the code, the Native Americans were speaking to each other on codes, using their language, and uh, the Germans could not, Couldn't crack it. could not attack. You know, they didn't know where to go, because the people had a dialect, the Navajos and the Apaches, and you know, they could communicate different language. They thought it was all going to be English, and it's, it wasn't. And all Spanish, no. Even Italian, all of those languages were gone. And it saved America. It saved a lot of America. Any last words before we go to the second reading? This is a pretty deep evening here at Holy Family Catholic Church. Second reading is a reading from the book of Revelation. Would you like to proclaim the second reading? Jenny, go for it. Loud, loud voice. Reading from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> I, John, had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. And I just want to stop you right there because now after we've had this robust conversation, when we get to heaven, what is John saying that heaven looks like? There were so many people there, I couldn't even count them. But were they all, pardon me, were they all white? Or were they all men? What does John say? I had a vision of so many people, I couldn't even count them. But they were from every race and nation and race, every people and tongue, every language. So that's what heaven is, is this beautiful, diverse group. Jamie? <clears throat> they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived at the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Let's just note the irony of what Janie just said. They washed their, they washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. What color is blood? Red. And so what color did they turn out after they washed their clothes in the blood of the lamb? They weren't red, they were white. white. Symbolic colors, right? Mm -hmm. The colors are symbolic, right? They washed their, their, their tunics, their, their clothes in the blood of the lamb. They died as martyrs. And when they pulled out their new clothes, what color were they? They were white. white. Pure, innocent, good. White is a symbolic color. All these people in heaven are clothed in white. 
and their clothes had been washed in the blood of the Lamb. They gave witness to the faith. Jenny? For this reason they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or or any heat strike them. We just pause right there because we're coming to this, otherwise we might pass over this. How does God shelters and protects us, right? The one who sits on the throne will shelter them like the good shepherd that God is. Right? Is any from the Lamb? For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their <coughs> eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lamb will shepherd them. Love that image, right? Where the, the Lamb becomes the shepherd. The Lamb will shepherd them, leading them to life, and there will be no more tears. Relating back to the theme of joy that we heard in the first reading of the Responsorial Real Psalm. The disciples were filled with joy. Sing joyfully to the Lord. Come before God with joyful songs. Whew. Questions or comments on this vision that John had of what heaven is going to be like? It's not us versus them. It's all of us in heaven. From every nation, race, people, and language. You mean Muslims too? Yeah. Atheists in heaven? You're done. I'll switch <coughs> and the record for the shortest gospel of the year goes to the fourth Sunday of Easter. So we take a look at the gospel for the fourth Sunday of Easter. We'd like to read the three sentences or so that we have for the gospel this Sunday. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Go for it. Other voice. Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who gives them to me is greater than all, and no, can, no one can take them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, Thanks be to God. Good Shepherd Sunday. We always hear a gospel like this. It's different every three years of the three year cycle. But this Sunday we have this very brief one Jesus saying, Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, right? I am the shepherd. Y'all are the sheep. My, my sheep hear my voice and they listen to me and they follow me. And I and God. The Father, it says here, I know that's very patriarchal, exclusive language, but it means God. I and God <coughs> are one, which is why it's so important to note in the scriptural insights on the next page how it is that that was so scandalous to the Jewish people to think that Jesus, this guy, this human being, is God. Yeah, no human being can be God. God doesn't become a human being. There's no way to cross this divide between God and human beings. You're telling me that God, the eternal, became mortal in the person of Jesus? The all-powerful became human like God? Cool. That was the insight that Christians had. And what we're hearing on Good Shepherd Sunday is Christ, the Good Shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Will we see Wooly this Sunday? Will we see Wooly on Sunday? For those who don't know, wool and teeth. <laughs> I took a man Good Shepherd Sunday, pull out a stuffed animal of a sheep. Because for me, the love, I, I love seeing human beings fascinate me. Because human beings can be really snarky with one another. And then you give them a cat or their dog, and they're like, oh, I'm going to be better you. <laughs> they treat other people like dogs. And they treat their dog like a human being. <laughs>
love that we share for our pets, if only we could share that same love for human beings. It's, why is it easier to love our pets than it is to love other be human beings? I suspect it has everything to do with the way that human beings treat one another. She called me this, and I'll never forgive her. He said that, and I'm not going to speak with him ever again. Or he called me this, and so I punched him. Pets, pets love you back. Pets love you back. Pets love you back. Yeah. Pets don't get snarky and say no, no, no. things that it causes us to hate one another as we sometimes do. My, my, my dogs, so every time they see me, they're wagging their tails. Because they know that somebody will give them a treat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, they're spoiled. No. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Any last comments on the Sunday scriptures for this good Sunday? This good Shepherd Sunday? Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday. Let's be good shepherds to one another. Yes. We have the rosary. Which mysteries are we doing this evening? The luminous mysteries on page 18. Luminous Mysteries on page 18, and where are we joining the camera? Did you get one? Did you get one? Did you get one? You're doing great. Joseph, did you need a rosary? Joseph. You need a rosary? You need a rosary, Joseph. Pointing out to everybody that I ran off about mine. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Habits. Remind me to tell you all about purgatory. <laughs> the luminous, page 18. Okay, we're just going to change the camera here. We have the luminous mysteries on page 18, 18 of Father Roy's Rosary. Does anyone have any intentions? Yes. Um, Ricardo Rodriguez, Irma Baron's son. Connie Mira Rio. Father Jamie, uh, Father Roy, Father Lee Barbaro, Deacon Angelita, Deacon Elsa, Pastor Tarver, Terry, Janie, Joseph and Nancy, Vincent Maldonado, Gloria Maldonado, Marie and Abel Luna, Maria Alcala, Consuelo Salcedo, Vidal and Julia Limon, Mario and Maria, Carmen and Frank Saldana, Irma Bowden, Amanda Rodriguez and Sons, Mary Scott, Gloria and Rudy Nieto, Mary Lou Pina, Deacon Canica Limon, Gilbert Tabila, Paul Limon, Leonard and Waldine, Louis and Rita, Father Joseph Dang, Art Navarro, um, Stephen and Jordan, who aren't here tonight, and Heather, uh, who is not here tonight. We pray for these people. Anybody else? My sisters in law, Millie and Alicia, my cousin Cynthia. Your prayers go to uh, the people that are suffering with serious illnesses like cancer and all the other serious illnesses that they are battling, trying to survive and may God. Hi, I'm sorry. Uh, to my daughter Terry Ann to continue her good health. 
Also to my kids and grandkids and great grandkids kids for their good health. To my brothers and sisters as well. And also to Benito to continue his recovery with his transplant. Amen. And to all, all the mothers in the world, I hope they have a happy Mother's Day. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray for an increase in the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. My hope comes from God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Three things will last forever. Faith hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The first luminous mystery, the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and was revealed as God's beloved Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. When John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. John continued, This is the one of whom I have said, The one who comes after me ranks ahead of me. For he was before me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. John told Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus answered him, Allow it for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. When Jesus was baptized, the heavens were immediately opened, and the Spirit descended on him in the form of a dove. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. A voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. John testified, I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. John said, For this I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus, Jesus was then led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The second luminous mystery, the wedding at Cana. At the request of Mary, Jesus performed his first miracle. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. days after meeting Andrew and Simon, Jesus and his disciples were invited to a wedding in the city of Cana in Galilee. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Jesus' and mother was there too. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, We are out of wine. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said to her, Why did you come to me? My time has not yet come. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary told the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. There were six stone jar water jars for Jewish purification rituals, each holding 18 to 27 gallons. Jesus told the servers, fill the jars with water. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus told the servants, pour some and take it to the, to the steward in charge. He said, 
The servers did as they were told. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The steward tasted the water that had become wine. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The steward called the groom and said to him, Everyone serves the best wine first. Then when people are drunk, they serve cheap wine. But you have saved the best wine for now. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This was Jesus' first miracle, where he made his glory public, and his disciples began to believe in him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Be all souls to heaven, especially those who must be in the background. The third luminous mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom. Jesus called all people to the conversion and service to God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In those days, John the Baptist preached in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus left Nazareth and lived in Capernaum by the sea, so that the words of the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. From that time, Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus came to his own country and taught the people in their synagogue. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The people were astonished and asked, where did he get this wisdom and these mighty works? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Is this not the carpenter's son? Don't we know his mother, Mary? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We know his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. His sisters are here with us too. Where then did he get this wisdom? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The people took offense at Jesus, who said, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus laid his hands on the sick and healed them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth luminous mystery, the transfiguration of Jesus. Jesus was revealed in glory to Peter, James, and John. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus was transfigured before them. His face shone like a shone like a like the sun, and his garments became white as light. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. We will set up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. While Peter was still <clears throat> speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. The disciples fell on their faces, filled with awe. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. When they lifted their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus alone. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and the Lord of Amen. As they came down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one of the vision until the Son of God is raised from the dead. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of the hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. 
the fifth luminous mystery, the institution of the Eucharist. Jesus shared a loaf of bread and a cup of wine at his last meal with his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Jesus said, If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will live in me, and I in you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. When it was evening, Jesus sat at the table with the twelve disciples. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus rose from supper, laid aside his garments, girded himself with a towel, and began to wash the disciples' feet. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. After he washed their feet, he said, If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too should wash one another's feet. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. He then took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until I drink it anew in the kingdom of heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The cup of blessing we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We are one body, although we are many individuals. All of us share one load. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need in thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O plant, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us. O Holy Mother of God, that, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Christ. O God, 
God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job, good job. Good job, good job. Yes, sir, they are. Thank you so much. So it's spring chicken. Father, fall asleep. <laughs> Time for birthday cake. For those who are joining us on Facebook, we'll be back in a few minutes.